Welcome to the trails, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are up in the mountains, a little seeking beauty, and yes, uphill running. Oh yeah, a nice, beautiful, snowy day in Colorado. All right, as we get this run going, I just want to start by saying thank you for being here. And if you could, if you could grab the link above, share it with your friends, spread it around to all your trail running buddies, that would be absolutely amazing because I know for a fact that we are stronger together as runners, as a YouTube family. There's just so many great people out there that are not watching these videos that love running, love trail running, and yes, love uphill running, and I would love to connect with them. So grab the link, spread it around like wildfire, and let's do this. Come on, YouTube. Here we go. So in 2018, I was able to ascend many mountains, uh, hit 325,000 vertical feet. I'll convert that to meters for everyone outside the US uh, later in this video. But I feel very fortunate that I hit that, but my goal now is 400,000 vertical feet of running in 2019. So yes, uphill running is in the blood. I love it and the Pikes Peak Ascent is gonna be one of my peak races of this year. I cannot wait to lace it up and toe the line against really the best mountain runners, some of the best mountain runners in the world. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, finishing up the run today. Oh man, about 10 miles. Let's see, I think it was right about under 2,500 feet of vertical. I'll upload it to Strava here in a little bit, but uh, gosh, now I wanna to talk to you all about some general uphill running techniques. And listen, I get it. Uphill running can be a little intimidating. If you're not used to it, if you're not used to trail running or ultra running, like figuring out how to best use your biomechanics, your, your stride basically, uh, in the hills and on different terrains. And on that note, like I've, the two biggest factors are the pitch or how steep is the, the mountain that you're running up, the, the trail that you're running up, and then the surface. So is it uh, snow like today? Is it sand? Sometimes there's sandy running. Is it just rocky, like really rocky, like the uh, speed goat race I did in Utah last summer? Like, so anyway, surface definitely makes an impact. And you know, are you, are you hopping over boulders? There's all sorts of factors, but okay, let's dive into a couple ideas that you can apply to your trail running, mountain running for helping with your form and your technique uphill. All right, let's go, come on. So 
for the first tip in te on technique with uphill running is you definitely want to land right on your forefoot. Not on your toes, you don't want to go too far forward, uh, and not on your heel, that's for sure. Landing on your heel is like braking in your car when you're driving up a mountain pass. Like you don't want to be pumping your brakes driving up a mountain pass. So right on your forefoot where Basically, your toes are connecting to your, to your foot. And then as you transition to your next stride, that's when you can start to roll into your toes, especially that big toe. But initially, it's that forefoot strike. And to help practice this, you can just stand in place like I am now, and not too big. You don't wanna be, you don't wanna be lunging your, your knee too high. Just stand in place and just do light springing, light springing. Just right in place, light springing, light springing, and do that for, you know, maybe 20 seconds times three times to start. And uh, just do that, you know, once a week, twice a week on a gentle hill. It could be a hill in your backyard. And just to get your Achilles, and get your calf, your soleus, your fascia on the bottom of your foot, and especially your toes, all of that used to just that springing feeling of landing on your forefoot, and that will pay off huge dividends for uh, getting used to this forefoot striking. Okay, next technique, let me back up a little bit, is uh, you want to, you don't want to be leaning back, uh, and you don't want to be leaning too far forward. Like if sometimes in races I get really tired and I end up like this like because I'm just like I'm dead I'm done I got nothing left and I'm like this and I'm doing this because you're just hurting so bad this is like mountain 50 K's but ideally you have a slight so you don't want to be you don't want to be leaning back you have a slight lean forward just a slight lean forward and you also as you're leaning forward just slightly you don't want your shoulders to start collapsing forward you want your shoulders to stay back uh, put them in their pockets put them in their pockets so put those shoulder blades back uh, because if you're leaning and crunching forward it's going to constrict your breathing and that is not good as runners so put those shoulders back and just keep a nice wide open um, torso basically or chest so that you can keep that breathing coming in uh, as you're going up the mountain Okay, another technique tip is that you don't want to be bounding up the mountain like you're overstriding, it's called. Like that is gonna wear you out so quick if you're overstriding. Now I get it, late in a race, uh, for example, when I took third at the Pikes Peak Ascent, I passed a guy in the last half mile from fourth to third, and that was a big moment because I was, I was digging. And I, yes, I was driving my knee and I could care less about my stride at that point in a 13 mile race up the mountain. I'm just trying to get to the finish line. But overall, the general rule is you don't want to overstride in uphill running. You want shorter steps that are faster and you don't want your knee, like obviously you need to lift your knees up in order to get over the rocks if it's a rocky course. But overall, shorter, faster strides are gonna, are gonna be better. So kind of that quick feet theory, like if you've ever practiced quick feet in track practice, I know I used to do that at the University of Colorado. So it's just that short stride uh, and just fast feet, just powering up the mountain. Uh, so over striding will really wear out your quads uh, and eventually your calves uh, is what I have found in my experience. Okay, last tip is arm swing. Oh my goodness, this is probably the most exciting. You've got, like your arms are, are critical, and that's why in the gym I love working out my arms, not to get bulky and big, but just to work on that arm swing. So I'll take dumbbells in the gym, and I'll just swing my arms uh, back and forth, back and forth. Not curls, like I don't wanna get big biceps. I wanna work on that rotation of the shoulders and the triceps and the biceps all working together. Uh, so it's just that, just that nice, powerful arm swing. Again, not overdoing it, not pushing your arms too far forward too quickly, but um, let me do that again for you so you can really see it. So, uh, so just like this, so you don't wanna do this, you don't wanna do that, you don't wanna do that. Let me, let me just get you one, one more here. I'm getting a workout just doing this. So just like boom, 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 boom. So just like that. Um, 
and I'll, I'll try and get you some b-roll shots to explain uh, all of that so so again uh, striking on your forefoot is best and it's gonna take practice to build up your foot strength and your lower ankle strength in order to do that but that is gonna be best striking on your forefoot and then don't overstride unless it's at the end of the race and you saved up enough, enough energy if you did that you played your race well and or your workout well and you deserve to be able to just crank it as hard as you can to that finish line no matter what it takes uh, and then as far as your actual stride on the ground um, you want shorter, shorter steps uh, that are quicker, shorter steps that are quicker up the mountain. Doot, doot, doot. It's like dancing up the mountain. Mountain running is dancing in disguise, as I like to say. All right, and then also your arm swing, just making sure that you're going straight forward with your arms, nice and relaxed. When your legs are getting tired, your arms can pull through in the clutch so, so well. Uh, but you have to be, you have to make that mental decision like, okay, I'm hurting, but I've got the mental wits about me to keep pumping my arms, keep pumping my arms. Okay, so those are my, I think that's about four tips for uphill running. We'll get more into this as the summer goes along. Once this snow is melting a little bit more, I'll be able to talk to you about more mountain running, like way up high in the big mountains. So back to the car and then uh, back to the house. We'll talk more about, oh, the speed cross fives and all that good stuff. All right, let's go. All right, and we're back, and we're back. Solid day, solid day, up in the mountains, getting some vert. And when I say vert, that's just a shortened way to say vertical. So today, let's see, I went 10 miles, 16 kilometers, 10.30 per mile, 6.30 per kilometer, and 2,100 feet of vertical gain. And I did do the conversion for everyone outside the US. That's 640 meters up, 640 meters down. So solid day of vert, gaining vert up in the uh, up in the mountains there through the snow. Holy guacamole, just trudging through that snow. Boom, boom, boom. Oh my goodness, man. I, I am, I, my legs can feel it right now. They can feel it right now. Just like tr oh, working on suppleness, right? Uh, and I, you know, I don't quite, <laughs> 174 RPMs, so that was my cadence, 174. I honestly have never really looked that closely at that stat. I'm trying to work, I'm trying to figure it out. If you guys work with your cadence, let me know. Like I'm just, I, I see the relevance of it, but I frankly don't quite understand how the watch is really tracking it that well. I guess there's a math, you know, there's a math formula to it, but hey, I studied history. I didn't study math, so maybe it's a little beyond me. But anyway, if anyone has any insight into that, let me know. Okay, today I was wearing, let's start with, let's start with my Solomon hat. You better believe it, the Solomon hat right there, the green guy right there, and then my Gooder sunglasses. Gooder sunglasses, still working on getting some Smith sunglasses, so there you go. With that and then as far as my shirt another Solomon product I had a lot of Solomon on today this is just the Solomon shirt it's uh, the advanced skin active dry I have had this shirt for three years and it is showing basically zero sign of wear and tear so high quality shirt here from Solomon it, I believe it was very expensive when I bought it probably 50 bucks but it's it's three years old and no sign of wear and tear so very good and then as far as my half tights oh you're gonna be blown away Nike is crushing it with these half tights and guess what you're not gonna believe how old they are these are the Nike fit dry half tights <laughs> I feel a little embarrassed telling you 13 years old 13 years old. I got these, I think my sophomore, maybe junior year at the University of Colorado for free. Thank you, Nike. And it's just in no sign of wear and tear. Like they just keep going. They just keep going. So I'll keep using them. And then, uh, so you saw me putting on at the car, these Mojo socks. I love these socks because it's basically a, comp a compression sleeve for your calf built into a sock and it's called Mojo, M-O-J-O, and it's really difficult to get the sock off of your leg once it's on because it's a, it is a pretty tight compression and I just wear some sort of compression once or twice a week just to help with recovery and drawing blood down to that area of the leg and these mojos are working with my mojo if you know what I mean if you know what I mean they're getting me going so uh, mojo socks and then of course the Solomon speed cross fives I will talk more about these in a minute oh love those shoes okay 
All right, and again, thank you for going through that little, I don't know, I guess if you could put it in the category of a coaching lesson for uphill running. And listen, I know there's other ideas and tips and techniques out there for running uphills or up mountains, however you want to define it. And also for all the high schoolers out there, you're probably not going to be able to apply some of those techniques to a cross country race. Like a 5k cross country, cross country race, you are all out. Like you are not all out, but you're running hard. And so you're not going to shorten your stride that that much on an uphill. Um, I do think you'd be able to use that lean forward technique just slightly, but not too far. Anyway, just keep, take it all with a grain of salt. Like I was running up in the mountains today. So for the high schoolers out there, just yeah, keep that in mind. And again, the reason I am trying to get better at running up hills is for the Pikes Peak Ascent in 2019. I think I can get better. I think I can get better. I know I can, especially with a little bit of strength focusing on form and yeah the pikes peak ascent is going to be you you know it's just like it's the peak race of 2019 i just i'm calling it now i'm just calling it now like and that keyword is up for uphill training thank you for hitting it up down in the comments and i'm happy to answer more questions about uphill running technique if you ask them down in the comments that'd be amazing i'll do my best to answer them question of the day and I was going back and forth a little bit on the question of the day but we're gonna go this direction what is an uphill battle that you are facing in your training and or and or your life right now listen I love talking about running but running is not like everything in life but listen we can you can go either direction an uphill battle that you are facing right now in training so a challenge or in life Another challenge, like life is filled with challenges and uphill battles, uphill uh, struggles, but with good technique, huh? Huh? Good technique, we can overcome these challenges, these uphill battles. So that is the question of the day. Thank you for answering down below. And I, I almost forgot. Hold on, one thing. Zensa was my arm warmers today. Zensa, Z E N S A H. And yes, all of this is available down below. And then this Raid Light, Raid Light. Uh, vest. This is a French company, and uh, it's a little a little heavier than some vests as far as the material, but I just love it because it, I can carry my drone in it, and it just really works out well for me. So that's from Raid Light, and I'll tr I don't know if this one's listed down below, but you can go check. If not, I'll, I'll try and remember to check tonight. All right, that is it. I love you guys again. Thank you for spreading this video around to all of your running buddies, your running groups, your cross country and track teams, and yes, your ultra running and mountain running groups. That'd be oh, it'd mean the world to me to help build this YouTube family. See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow. Woo! We're doing it, folks. We're doing it. Oh, I don't think I'll talk about the Speed Cross 5s. We'll come back to these another day. I'm kind of tired. I'm kind of tired. Mm. Look at that mug. Butter my bread.